<laughs> hey team, today I am counting down my top 10 picks for books that I read this year. As of recording this, I have read 64 books this year, and these are the 10 that I would recommend you pick up next year. Um, not Most of these did not come out in 2023, just pre to preface. We'll start with number 10, of course. That is Fun Home by Alison Bechtel. You've probably heard the name Alison Bechtel because she created the Bechtel test. More important, it's actually the Bechtel Wallace test. She made it with her friend, um, Alice Wallace. And she was, she wrote like comic strips. Um, her comic was specifically called Dykes to Watch Out For. And that's where the Bechtel test comes from. And she wrote Fun Home, which is basically a novel about her like entire life, starting with her childhood. It talks about, it is very heavily focused on her dad and her his like craziness and also like he was like sleeping with his students and was in the closet and like a lot of stuff but also talks about Allison's like life and growing up in this weird house that was kind of secluded and also just growing up as a lesbian in the time that she did growing up as a lesbian today sucks I can't imagine doing it like 40 years ago no like 60 at this rate um anyway I highly recommend that book if you haven't read it it's literally a graphic novel and you'll fly through it in ninth place I have before the coffee gets cold this is a collection of short stories set all in the same coffee shop which can take you back in time and it's just it it's a really really well written story about loss um I just highly recommend this to anyone. It's it's short, it's easy, and it'll make you cry. In eighth place, another book that's going to make you cry, um, The Kite Runner. I fucking love The Kite Runner. I made a whole video where I read sad TikTok books, and that was one of the only two that I left really, really enjoying. And like, I'll link that down below. But The Kite Runner takes place during the Afghan war, and it follows Amir and Hassan and their friendship and then they're falling out and then Amir's life growing up without Hassan and then Amir going back to Afghanistan to find Hassan and all of that stuff and it's just slightly above that in seventh place I have Camp Damascus which is totally totally underrated everyone go read this it's like 200 pages it is about it's but I'm a cheerleader but it's a horror novel I read this in October and it was my favorite read of the month it was the best thing to get me into the spooky season it's very gay but also not super like anti-church it's just anti-hate like I don't know. I just I just really, really liked this book. It was really well done. Above that at number six is another book that I read for my reading sad TikTok books, and that is My Dark Vanessa. Um, this follows a relationship between Vanessa and her English teacher, who is like 24 years older than her or some shit. And it's really interesting because it is told through the eyes of the victim before she realizes she is the victim. So like the tagline is, all he did is fall in love with me and now the world has turned him into a monster. And it just, it addresses this like sexual abuse with such like empathy and it's just very, very well done in my opinion. Um, and again, you can see my reaction to it as I read it in the video down below. In fifth place, I have Moon Knight, The Complete Collection. If you're trying to get into reading comic books, pick this bitch up. I'm not even a big Moon Knight girl. Like Daredevil is my main, like my main squeeze. Like Daredevil comic books, I eat those up with a spoon. I randomly picked this one up because it was at my library. I would, I would recommend this. It's just like the perfect comic book. It's so freaking cool. Go read it. Um, in fourth place, Book Lovers by Emily Henry. This is a book that I reread this year, but previously I had rated it 
four stars. Now it is solidified as a five star book, which I do not give out easily. This follows Nora and Charlie. And Nora is the big city girl who goes to the small town. She's not looking for romance. And then she finds the one, but the one is a fellow big city boy who's just randomly in this small town. And it is very much if you are motherless, an older sister, a hopeless romantic, even someone who doesn't typically like romance or especially doesn't like heterosexual romance normally, this is the only heterosexual romance book I will recommend. And it is just, it's just so good. I love this book. I've talked about this book on this channel multiple times. Like it is legit one of my favorite books ever. Above that at number three, another five-star read, we have The Hunger Games. Again, another book I reread this year. If you haven't reread this since you were 12 years old, go fucking do it. Rereading this as an adult is crazy. Like, she's so right. She just, like, Susan Collins just casually released the most nuanced, introspective, and creative look into politics and war. And I read it at age 12 thinking I understood it, and I didn't know shit. That book's so fucking good. In second place, I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy. Pick this bitch up. This is what got me back into reading this year. If I hadn't read this book, I, there is no way I would have read 60 books this year. I would be like, I would have read like 25 books without this book. Like this got me into it. And Jeanette McCurdy is an author. Like a lot of celebrities recently have been publishing um, memoirs. And it's like, babe, I either know you had a ghostwriter, you have a second writer on the book's cover or you I can tell you don't know how to write Jeanette McCurdy writes so so well I hope she continues writing I can't wait to see what she puts out next um and then in first place I've talked about this book before Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zevin this is my favorite book that I have read this year it's so fucking good um it follows Sadie and Sam they meet in the hospital as kids and bond over their love of video games. Then they have a falling out. They re-meet in college and decide to start making video games together. And it just follows their relationship over the path of their like pretty much entire lives. And it's just, it's a book about friendship and it is one of the best books about friendship. Also, damn Gabrielle Zevin can write. Holy fuck can she write. Some of the best writing I've ever seen. And also just some of the most like, like, despite it being profound writing, it was also fast-paced and easy to read, and, like, I read in a couple days. I feel like sometimes you have to sacrifice the ability to steamroll through a book for good writing, or you have to sacrifice good writing for the ability to steamroll through a book, and people like Gabrielle Zevin don't mess around, and they can do both, and it's really impressive, and I love it. Anyway, let me know your favorite books that you read this year, whether they come out this year or not. Let me know your thoughts on the books that I have read this year, etc., etc. Do the things that YouTube likes, like, comment, subscribe. Peace out.